Hello everyone, my name is Arthur Clark. I'm a senior customer success manager on our public sector team, where I manage some of our top federal, state and local, and higher education customers. As a customer success manager, my role is to be a liaison between Okta and our customers to help drive their success and ensure that they are getting the most out of their investment with Okta. This includes having a deep understanding of my customer's business, key stakeholders, and unique use cases. I also keep my customers updated on new functionality and features while providing support to them on large implementations. Today, you will hear a story of how the County of Oakland, Michigan is using Okta for seamless access management for both their workforce, which includes employees, contractors, and partners, as well as the citizens of their county. This implementation was a partnership between the engineering team from the County of Oakland and Octus Customer First Organization, which includes our customer success and professional services teams. I encourage you to submit all questions in the chat and we will be happy to answer them during the QA at the end. So without further delay, I'd like to introduce to you the masterminds behind the County of Oakland, Chief Technology Officer EJ Wyden and Lead Architect Shukar Mohammed. Thanks, Arthur. Hi everyone, my name is EJ Wadden and as Arthur mentioned, I'm the Chief Technology Officer for Oakland County. Part of my role is ensuring that we supply our services to our citizens and make sure that all the technology that underlies this works together seamlessly. We focus on the five key vectors of architecture, ensuring that application, data, security, technology, all function in a single way that nothing breaks the business. With that, I'd like to turn it over to Shukar to introduce himself briefly before we get started. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is uh, Shukur Mohammed. I'm the Applications Architect at Oakland County. Uh, on top of working with Okta, I also work heavily on with cloud technologies and primarily AWS. I, I have been in IT for the past 25 years, and I've been involved in a lot of projects from a development and uh, architecture perspectives. Uh, EJ is going to kick it off right now, and uh, we'll pick it back up later. Thanks, Shukar. So we want to talk about our story with Okta, and with that, we want to start by first explaining a little bit about Oakland County. So where is Oakland County? We're located in Michigan, not California, as some people often confuse us with. We are located southwest of Detroit, but in southeast Michigan, and you can see the shaded block of where we are in the mitten of Michigan. We are about a thousand square miles with 1.2 million citizens. This county is one of the largest in the US. If you were to think about gross domestic product, Oakland County would finish 36th out of the 50 states in the United States in gross domestic product. Our philosophy at the county is to build it once, pay for it once, and share technologies. We share these technologies across the state of Michigan and sometimes across the US with other nonprofit organizations. Some of the things that we offer we offer water resources, fire rescue, police services, pet licensing, birth certificates. At the end of the day, we supply 83 government services to those 1.2 million citizens, and we share these things across the state. Law enforcement, we share with 200 agencies and 10 counties across the state of Michigan. We have our G2G marketplace where we share our best practices and some of our assessment tools with over a thousand users at www.g2gmarket.com. For those of you in a nonprofit, you may wanna take a look at some of these items, see some of the contracts that we offer as well that we share with people so you can take advantage of our lessons learned. As we look at what else Michigan is about and what we do in Oakland County, we have 5,000 employees that service those 83 lines of business. So you think that's a, not a large number of people, but yet we get this thing done every day. The other key attribute of this county that we focus on is placemaking. County government is the largest form of government that still works with citizens on a daily basis. Once you get beyond the county government, you don't see citizens on a daily basis. So we get to interact with our constituents every day. I mentioned water, I mentioned birth records, other things like that. It's a daily interaction for us. So it's important for us to meet those needs and focus on this concept of placemaking. Placemaking is building an environment that meets the needs of your citizens regardless of age. So in my particular example, I live in Oakland County. My children will go off to college. They will then hopefully come back to Oakland County, start their careers, 
get married, have children, and I will be a grandparent still living in Oakland County with my children and grandchildren living in the county. That is a key piece of what we're trying to do. And as you look about the changing of the economy in Oakland County, one of the things we're facing right now is something called a silver tsunami. We have an aging population that's going to have to still interact with the county. And as you know, COVID's come in and forced a push to digital activities. We're working through some of those things with that broad base of citizens that we, that we account for. So let me take you on a little journey of what we do at Oakland County from an IT perspective. Hopefully this will resonate with some of you as you're all probably delivering technology solutions. Our number one goal as IT in Oakland County is to build a better future that's built on trust. We think there are four key building blocks to building trust. The first is improving technology. For better or worse, people expect their technology to work like a light switch today. When you turn it on, you need to have light. When you turn it off, it goes off. They expect it on an on-demand level when they need it. When things go wrong, we have to jump in and fix those items. In Oakland County, we focus on fixing root cause to incidents. If we have recurring incidents, we will form a problem team to bring a root cause solution to reduce that from coming forward. And that is the first step to building trust. Once I can show you that my technology platforms work for you the way you need them, you will start to trust me. As a county government, another important thing for me is to reduce total cost of ownership. In county government, we get our money through the taxes of our citizens. We have a fiscal responsibility to every one of those 1.2 million citizens to use that money in the best way possible. How do you go about reducing total cost of ownership? One of the ways you go about it is maximizing licensing. So we try not to have any shelfware and make maximum use of any tool that we bring into our environment. We try to also remove redundant tools wherever possible. We also look at ways to keep the cost of technical debt down as that cost increases with an aging application. The next pillar of this is strategy and innovation. This is where Shukra and I and some of the others on my team really focus. We don't just look 12 months out or even two years out. We look at three to five year roadmaps of where we want to be. We look for technologies that aren't bleeding edge, but we want to be on the leading edge of bringing those technologies to our citizens and how we move forward. The next thing we focus on is that building of enduring relationships. We work with our business partners and our citizens to make sure their needs are met on a daily basis. So now that I've talked a little bit about the building blocks of IT, let's talk about how we build our technology roadmap. This is a little bit from the strategy perspective of how we see the world and what we do with the county. This story will become integral to our Okta story as well, and I think you'll start seeing the threads tie together with the rest of the presentation. So the future of IT at Oakland County is we are a buy versus build shop. I mentioned that we have 5,000 employees, about 250 of those employees and contractors work on IT for those 83 different government services. Not possible to do custom development for that many pieces. On the Oakland County side of the business, we have over 200 applications that run and you could not staff that with just 250 people. So we always look to buy versus build unless there's a competitive advantage that can be gained by building the technology. The next thing we have is a hybrid data center approach. Today we have five data centers. We have three in AWS, two in the commercial cloud, one in GovCloud. By the way, we are the first government in the state of Michigan to have an improved GovCloud build for criminal justice information. So we're really proud to have that going in there. We use commercial cloud for all the other aspects of our cloud business, we run 20% of our footprint in the cloud today. We have two on-prem data centers and we have that running in the state of Michigan. When I first joined the county about five years ago, we all talked about a hard outer shell so that people couldn't penetrate you. But with the pandemic that occurred, people need access to your information and sometimes that hard outer shell or when you make a broad-based security play you can turn off people's needs to their application. So we're focusing to a precision-based security approach, meaning you're able to take out the threat vector without shutting down a lot of the business in between. Our new build is integration. We still have to share data amongst these different applications and how we do that is through integration. And that's where the team focuses a lot of their energy today. The next piece is how do we control access? In IT, our chief role is to be a data guardian. We are supposed to grant access to the right people at the right time at the right level. 
So that is a key attribute of where the Octopiece plays into this. And the final piece of this building block is managing technical risk. We have a tool called TechDat Check, and we use this to evaluate how the aging application portfolio and technical footprint can impact the way we run our business. And this was a key attribute in how we moved forward with the Okta decision. So how did we get here? Oakland County has been through five iterations of trying to move to an identity and access management solution. This fifth time was the charm for us. And how did we start this journey? By the way, the next two slides I'm about to show, the language in these slides were actually taken directly from the Board of Commissioner material that we used to help drive the concept through and being able to move forward with the project. But people like myself and Shuker, a couple others from the team sat down and we started talking about the digital world. And what does it mean to be in the digital world and it not being safe? Inside Oakland County, we talk about over 50% of all security breaches coming from someone stealing an identity. You see this all the time in your personal lives, and it's no different from a government point of view, and probably not any different when you're in the private sector as well. The next thing we know is that phishing is a top security concern among CEOs, CIOs, CISOs, government officials. You can see it in any periodical that comes through. The county in particular, we spend a lot of time in cyber education, teaching people about phishing and running active phishing campaigns to ensure that people are aware of what they're being exposed to and to catch the threads so that they can keep us protected. The next thing we face is increased risks. You have on-premise, you have in the cloud, you have data sitting in software as a service locations. It gets more and more complex the more you look at it. And the last thing is, as a person, you have too many logins and passwords to remember for all your applications, from banking apps to credit bureaus, to your own personal restaurant apps, Target, Amazon, anything else. You have tons of passwords, and this is no different for others as it is for us as citizens. So Oakland County started with our identity vision. And the first step of this was to better protect our identities. We have that increasingly unsafe digital world. And with this came the opportunity to look at what we needed to do. We also need to consolidate and standardize identity management and the security of our identities countywide. When we looked at our technical debt situation and one of our standards is who resides in our AD, we decided that only active employees and contractors should be residing in AD. Over 50% of our application portfolio uses custom authentication. That would mean 50 different processes if someone had access into every system to try and control and maintain a phishing attack. The next thing is we needed defendable standards and how we were going to audit access and data. As a county government, we face audits from criminal justice, PCI, HIPAA, just to name a few. We face several a year and the ability to meet their standards and prove that we have secured the identities of citizens is essential. Our citizens trust us to protect their data and I think the standard is a little higher for a government than it even may be for private sector. We also had to future proof our environment. Applications are getting more and more complex and the threat vectors from security hackers are getting even more and more devious. So how are we going to protect this and ensure that we had people protected? The next thing we needed was a real-time system log that include geolocation tracking and blocking and security reports that could integrate with our SIM. So this is kind of how the county began our journey with Okta. We went through a robust selection process over 100 requirements and 12 different use cases for the 26 methods of authentication we went through, and Okta proved to be the best solution to meet our needs. From a high level, this is kind of how we drove this project to being able to begin. And now I'm going to turn it over to Shuker to talk about some of the details of everything we achieved. Thanks, Ejir. And um, I'd like to start off by talking about what our identity space looked like before we got Okta. And from a primary perspective, like we had our Identity is distributed across multiple user stores and Active Directory was one of the primary stores for identities and it was fed by our HR system, which was PeopleSoft at that time. And all our employees were fed in through this process. The other types of users were loaded into our Active Directory in a manual fashion. However, like EJ mentioned, only 50% of the applications were using AD as their identity store. 
We had users also present in SQL Server databases, Oracle databases, Access, and other databases as well. And our SaaS applications like Salesforce um, and cloud, cloud services like AWS had their own set of identities that were totally independent of the other identities that were on premise. So this naturally led to a variety of authentication methods that were used across all these applications. ADFS was one of the primary ones that was used for, and it was used primarily for Office 365 and to authenticate a handful of applications with SAML. We had a couple of legacy IDPs um, that were used to authenticate another set of applications. Uh, the authentication for applications uh, whose identities were stored in the databases like SQL Server and Oracle were based on who developed these applications and when the code was developed. And at one point, like EJ mentioned, we had over 25 different authentication methods across our departments to uh, authenticate users into applications. So what did this do? Like it had a major impact on our security posture. Uh, end users had to take on a lot of responsibility to remember and manage multiple usernames and passwords and there was no way to enforce policy at a global level uh, at an enterprise level it was also very difficult and inconsistent to implement mfa for these applications provisioning and deprovisioning of identities was also a major concern since users had to be added and removed from each of these user stores that the users had to be in and this created another security uh, issue that we had to deal with. And as a government organization, we also had to meet certain requirements, compliance requirements, like EJ mentioned for sieges, HIPAA, PCI, etc. And this also required good audit data and auditing reports were not readily available for us. And we had to pull them out of Active Directory and the different user stores and it was taking a lot of effort for us to get these reports generated. Uh, we also didn't have a unified reporting platform where we just we had to get the reporting based on what was available uh, within that identity store. So overall, supporting all of these identities and authentication methods across these different applications was a, an extremely intensive process. And um, essentially we lacked the sophistication needed to manage and secure these identities in a very effective fashion. So how did we approach uh, the problem uh, and how did we start implementing uh, Okta? We identified the different types of users uh, that we, we had to uh, configure and we, we were trying to figure out how they should be handled and separated. One of the initial decisions we made was to uh, configure two tenants. One we call the Okta Workforce and the other one was the Okta Public Tenant. The Workforce Tenant, uh, we have the employees, the contractors and partners and our partners consist of our city, village, township, government users who we work with on a very frequent basis. Um, users who belong to federal government, um, uh, school users, hospital users, our vendors, and, and so on. Our public tenant um, consisted of retirees and citizens of the county. And the reason for this separation of these users into separate tenants is to isolate them totally so that we can apply a different set of onboarding procedures, security policies, and, and most of all, we wanted to isolate users that are in the public tenant to access an application that was intended for internal use only. So it, it gave us like a, a huge security um, advantage. And we used the Oct or connector application to push and match users from the workforce tenant to the public tenant. And this was primarily used uh, to push administrators and any other um, testers who needed to access applications in the public tenant. 
And what this model did was to ensure that uh, one user has only one identity and they will all, always be using that one particular identity to access all applications that are hosted by Auckland County. So we, we reduced the number of usernames and passwords and we got down to one identity per user. So now that we talked about the different tenants, how do we provision users into these tenants? Um, we initially got lucky where the county was also in the process of upgrading our HR system to work there during the same time period. So this helped us like when we connected Workday to Okta, we, we provisioned users from our employees from Workday to the Okta workforce tenant. Um, and our retirees are provisioned into the public tenant from the same Okta tenant. Uh, the contractors and partner are provisioned into the workforce tenant with the homegrown application that we call the Octa Support Utility. And citizens are provisioned into the public tenant with the out of the box Octa self registration functionality. And once the users are in Octa, they are provisioned into uh, the applications using pre built connectors using um, the Octa integration network applications or with skim and we have developed templates and code snippets which assist our developers to start using skim uh, to provision users into their applications we have all also used doctor work for workflows to provision users into certain applications that don't support skim but have uh, apis that are available for us to use and we were one of the early adopters of workflows and uh, we were very happy with the speed that it provided for development and implementation. We also use Okta APIs heavily and we use it to build applications like web applications like the Okta Support Utility, like the one I talked about earlier. Um, and we also use it for a lot, a lot of batch processing where we have to manage a large set of identities um, and we run into some limits with the Okta workflows. So now that we talked about provisioning, how do we authenticate um, users into Okta? Like the employees, contractors, and partners, like we talked about earlier, are authenticating into the Okta workforce tenant, and the retirees and citizens will be authenticating to the public tenant. And once they're authenticated, they will be able to access applications that are presented on their dashboards. Um, and when integrating with Okta, with, when integrating applications with Okta, we look to see if the application is a part of the Okta integration network and a pre-built integration exists already. And if, if it does exist, we choose that as a primary method of migrating the application or integrating the application with Okta. We have adopted OpenID Connect as the preferred choice to authenticate any homegrown applications. And we use uh, SAML as the preferred method to authenticate for, uh, for any SaaS applications. So overall, we have reduced the number of authentication methods by doing, we're taking these steps from over 25 to a handful of manageable ones. And we have built the building blocks for new development projects and, and efforts to uh, to market Okta and to, to to integrate Okta in a very effective fashion. And some of the major integrations that we have done so far are with AWS, with Workday, which was our biggest one so far. We have integrated ArcGIS Online, which has a lot of users. Um, and we have Microsoft 365, which is in progress. And we also have Salesforce, which is in progress. And we expect these integrations to continue for a while and uh, because it's going to be a long process and it will take a little bit of time to get all of our applications migrated to use Okta. Now I just want to like summarize by showing what the before and after picture looks like. So on the left, we have, uh, we have different identity stores, different authentication methods for all of our applications. And on the right, we see a very streamlined and, uh, and, and more of an effective approach where we have, um, 
we have a single uh, authentication source, a single identity per user, and uh, and, a, and a handful of authentication methods that we have identified and uh, and we can manage in a very effective fashion. Now I turn it back to EJ to uh, to finish up. EJ, thanks, Shukar. Sometimes you forget the journey we've taken to get here, and it's been a long but great journey and we've been very successful. So coming back to what we've achieved, I wanna just kind of walk back through the presentation a little bit and talk about everything that's been done. So if you remember earlier, I made, I told you the commitments we made to our board of commissioners of how we were going to solve some issues. And we made other commitments inside of IT and Shuker was demonstrating how we reduced a lot of the risk footprint, but let's talk about what this really looks like. So what did we do? We actually have a secure identity vision now for the county. The first thing we have is a single identity source. Before I had multiple sources of identity, I had people that were in different applications with different rights, and we were able to transform this and Okta is now the system of record for identities for Oakland County. And things are fed directly from Okta as we move forward. The next thing we were able to enable was multi-factor authentication. So, We've struggled with trying to get MFA rolled out to our end user community. And with the COVID situation, in addition to some security breaches that may have occurred, we found an opportunity to create a multi-factor authentication strategy and get it deployed and rolled out to our end users. The next thing we've done is we've satisfied the auditing and reporting requirements that we have as a county, whether this relates to criminal justice, PCI, HIPAA, or even just security standards as a whole. We're able to meet the needs and get the reporting we need on an easy to do basis. One of the next key benefits we got was user self-service. Our largest call volume coming into our help desk was for users to reset passwords. We have managed to transform that and bring that back down and people are using self-service to reset their own passwords and reducing the call volumes we experience as a county. The next thing we did was develop a cost of an identity. So, as I mentioned, we've gone through several iterations of trying to bring an identity process into the county. And one of the hiccups was, how do you keep this going and how do you pay for it? As a government organization, maybe you all have chargebacks too. We have a chargeback method. I charge you for a laptop or I have a chargeback for a server in the cloud. We were able to agree that there should be the cost of an identity, just like a new hire gets a phone gets a machine, we also give you an identity. And we were able to attribute a cost of an identity as part of our ongoing cost stream for this to justify the value and the security that comes from bringing in a tool like this. The last thing we got was a reusable delivery plan. So another thing we needed to do was figure out how we were gonna roll this out. Our reusable delivery plan was essential to what we needed to do to accomplish a growing application footprint. As I mentioned, and Shukers mentioned, we had a lot of different ways applications were gonna be brought into this environment. As we pared this back down, we had 12 use cases that Okta came in and demoed and proved to us. And we developed 35 applications that needed to be migrated. We documented all those migrations and we have built a plan so that we can execute this against the rest of the portfolio as we move forward. So, one of the things we always like to do at Oakland County when we deliver a presentation is we talk about a lot of different things, a lot of different material comes out. What are the key takeaways from everything we shared today and helping you potentially move forward with your own journey and identity? So the first thing we talk about is one, start with your vision. You need to know where you wanna to go to know you're gonna make progress to get there. As you start with that vision, make sure you're gonna talk in the terms that your key stakeholders are gonna to wanna to talk in. So we have different versions of our story, one that makes sense for our board of commissioners, one that makes sense for our business partners, one that makes sense for our IT partners, and we are able to talk the same language with the people that we need to speak to and make sure that vision resonates with all those stakeholders. Next thing is leverage security risk to generate buy-in. It's a viable thing to do and you have to face security head on. And this is really about securing things. It is no longer about just making life easier. It is about how you protect yourself 
against a phishing attack and people getting credentials into your system that shouldn't be in there. The next thing is, how do you pay for this? That chargeback model for creating, for creating an identity is essentially important for us as a county government. It is one of the biggest success factors we actually had in moving this forward. The next thing is you need to keep it simple and remove your technical debt. So we mentioned over 50% of the applications didn't have a standard authentication mechanism. They were all custom. Every time we have to upgrade those applications, it was 100, 200 hours of work to make those migrations happen. By simplifying this and going with Okta, we've reduced the time to make those upgrades happen and it helps us reduce our technical debt from the authentication space while securing it at the same time. Next thing is you have to demonstrate success to keep your momentum. When we first got permission to start this journey, people were waiting to see what was gonna happen. Our first step in this journey was to go to the AWS cloud environment and then use Okta for authentication to the cloud. Why did we pick that first? We had the most control over that domain. Shuker and I and some of the members of our team are the ones who deliver cloud to Oakland County. So we went there first to prove that it would work. Next thing you find is a willing business partner to go with you. We found willing business partners that were in the cloud environment and they were the first adopters to going through this and people saw success. That success is what builds the momentum to keep it moving forward as we continue to go down this journey. Let success create your migration strategy. If you go back to when Shukra and I started this journey with Okta, we had a robust idea of how it was gonna go. And we talked about where we were gonna go first and how this was all just gonna come in line and it was gonna be this seamless, flawless plan and it was just going to go, it was gonna be magical. Well, it became an easier way to do it to let the success bring your migration to you. So for example, we only said we were gonna do 33 applications in this first wave of projects and we're nearing the end of that. M365 is one of the last things we are slated to migrate over. You asked Shukra and I, we'd tell you it was the first thing we wanted to do, but given conflicting priorities, it became the last. However, I can sit here today and tell you we have 55 applications actually migrated. We have application owners moving and asking to integrate Okta with their applications as they're doing work in their applications. So let that success be the key driver in how you move forward. And the last lesson learned from this is you need patience, perseverance, and flexibility. And remember, implementation and migration takes time. So I mentioned flexibility. Shukra and I would have started with M365. It is now at the tail end of the project given other priorities that took place. Perseverance comes in. I said we tried this five different times, but we never gave up. Even when this last attempt got a little tough, we continued to work through it until we found a way to do this because it was important to the county, important to the citizens, and important to IT. And it takes patience. Thank you, everybody, for taking the time to join us today. Hopefully, you learned something and you took some lessons learned that'll help you in your own identity journey. For those of you looking to learn more about the Oakland County experience, you can always feel free to reach out to us. You can call the county desk and they can route you to myself and to Shuker, or you can find us on LinkedIn. We'd love to answer any questions and share any more details about our journey that can help you with yours. As I mentioned, our philosophy is build it once and share it. We would love to share anything with the story. With that, I will turn this back to you, Arthur. Thanks a lot, EJ. And again, we encourage you to continue to submit all questions in the chat, and we'll be happy to answer them as we go through this presentation. Got a few questions for you guys, uh, just so we can wrap this up. Um, Shukar, what advice would you have for anyone that's looking to achieve uh, similar goals? My advice would be uh, you, you want to start off by identifying a group, core group of people who would be willing to take this on. Start by looking at a clean slate and not carry over anything that you already have. So what I would suggest is look at it from like a different perspective. Don't look at what you have done with your identity and management already and try to automate uh, as much as possible. Uh, once we start with a clean slate, we can always uh, scale it back and, and if we need it to. But uh, I would suggest we start with a clean slate, try to do as much automation as possible. That way uh, you can reduce the amount of manual effort that you have to do. 
and self-service and educate people and educate your team on and, and market it within your own organization to make sure that they all understand the the benefits of uh, a centralized identity solution like Carta. EJ, do you have anything more to add? I would just reinforce the idea of telling the story in the words your stakeholders understand, and don't be afraid to change that story for your audience. It's not a one size fits all. So my board of commissioners is one language. My IT team is another language. The language Shukra and I share is even different than that. You need to have all of those stories aligned so that you can tell the right story to the right audience to bring them all with you on the journey. That is the essential difference to it. And once again, I would reinforce the idea of the chargeback model, building a cost of identity, just like you charge for a laptop or anything else that you give a new employee. And identity is one of those new things that you have to think about. It's something that's of value. It's the number one thing that hackers are going after. So securing an identity is critical and you owe that to your people and you owe that to your citizens. Wow, great concept. Um, one additional question for you, EJ, which element of this project are you most proud of or excited about? Great question, Arthur. I would tell you the proudest moment for me was the Workday integration. So one of the beauties of this was the flexibility of the Okta tool was we built this into our legacy environment and we fed Okta from our Active Directory. And with the Workday integration that Shukar touched on during his presentation, we changed the entire way we authenticate people in the county and Okta became the system of record. It was one of the most seamless and flawless executions that I've seen when you flip how identities get built for an organization. And a lot of that attributed to the partnership we had. Okta was with us every step of the way. You had people on calls with us and we made this flip. And I am so proud to say that it went flawlessly. We converted 5,000 people, over 8,000 retirees, all in over the course of a weekend. So I would tell you that is my favorite success story with this journey so far. Wow, Shukar, can you answer that? What, what element of this project are you most excited about? Uh, I think this was a huge change for us at the county and change I, I know uh, we all know is, is an extremely difficult thing. And um, like we we found, we saw a lot of change in, in, in how people were adopting Okta as well within the county. Um, as a government, we are traditionally a little slow to adopt change, but this was a, a, a good thing where we had our departments, our our end users also embracing Okta. So this was, uh, I think, a, a good moment. I mean, we don't have these kinds of uh, seamless changes that, uh, and easily adopted by users and, and IT folks at the same time. So that, that I think, was, uh, was a was a good and shining thing for us. Awesome. Last question, EJ, it's probably loaded, but I'm gonna shoot it at you. What's next for you and Okta? So for us, it's gonna be continue moving forward with the migrations. We have a couple of applications left to finish off on this initial journey. And I'm proud to sit here and tell you that we've got additional funding to continue the journey. Our original plan for rolling this out was Every app was going to pay the freight to move to Okta as they went through their upgrade path, their upgrade path. And with all the success we've seen with the apps that have migrated and people seeing the value and importance of securing identities, we are getting an additional project built to handle more of these migrations. And Shuker and the team are working now on that priority list of which ones we're going to tackle next as we get through this next leg of the journey. And one of the coolest things that's happened with this, Arthur, is we had substantial change at the county that occurred. Our previous county executive had passed away while in office and a new county executive came in with new leadership at the county. Would they have embraced the journey we started and are fully supportive of the work we're doing and continue to help us drive this value for our citizens. So it's been an amazing step to see this. And part of that goes back to making sure your stakeholders understand the journey. I can't stress that enough. Wow. Well, I was fortunate enough to be a part of this journey from almost the beginning. It's been a pleasure working with you and helping you guys drive success this far. I really look forward to what the future holds for the County of Oakland with Okta, and I'm grateful to be a part of this journey. Thanks a lot, EJ. Thanks a lot, Shuker. Thank you. Have a great day. Yeah, thanks for having us. Thanks, you too.